get the moonlighting job at a certain hospital. Today, her cousin testified again that she has a newborn baby. While she was home at the village looking after the newborn baby, she received a call that she has got a new job in one of the hospitals in Kimosa. Glory to God. In Jesus' name. Believing the word of God to be taught with power, power of the Holy Spirit, power to heal, power to bless, and power to protect in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us go through the word of God from the book of Jeremiah chapter 13 from verse number 19. The Bible says that the cities in the Gav will be shut down. There will be no one opening them. All Judah will be carried out into exile. Carried completely away. Then when we are hearing that, that the word of God is saying that the city of Negev will be shut up. There will be no one to open them. And all Judah will be carried away to exile. One thing that we must try to find out, you know, if God is saying this, this kind of things, what have gone wrong? What, God, what have gone wrong because God is God of Judah? As God is God of Israel, is God of Judah. Is God of Israel. Is God of Judah. He loved Judah. As he loved Judah, he was ideally the Lord wants to protect Judah. Ideally, he does not want anything to happen to Judah. 
if you can find a place where God is not happy with the child of God and God is saying that the child of God will be sent into captivity the child of God will be under attack you must ask yourself what have gone wrong because God loves his child God have said that to his to those who are his the bible say that god have said that you are the apple of my eyes we are the apple of god's eye and that anyone who want to touch us and anyone who want to touch the child of god god is saying that he will fight for those who are his he will defend those who are his he will do anything to protect those who are his But if you find the time where God is saying that because in the prophecy where God is angry and is tired of the most of the time of the sins that they have committed whether it is Judah whether it's the child of God of the sin that they have committed God will talk about that they will be under attack. God will warn them and tell them that things are going to be very bad. And let me tell you this. God is begin to say those things. He said those things not because he hate them. He said those things because he's angry against them and God love them and is first of all is saying what is saying to warn them so that the children of God can amend their ways can change their bad habits can repent and turn from their wicked ways so that their situation may change only those who does not know who does not know the ways of god will not understand the language of god when god prophesies against them when god begin to say that he will fight against them only those who does not understand the ways of god the plans of god how god do things when they hear something like that they will just watch they will just watch for example the bible talks about the man of god jonah the bible say that you know when you read the book of jonah chapter 1 the word of the lord came to jonah the son of amity go to the great city of nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness have come up before me but Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish he went down to Joppa where he found a ship bound for that port after paying a fare he went aboard and sailed to Tarshish to flee from the Lord the Lord sent a great wind in the sea on the sea and such violent storm arose and the ship treated to the breakup the sailors all the sailors were afraid and each cried to its own God they threw the cargo into the sea to lighten the ship but Jonah gone below the deck where he lay down and fell into deep sleep the captain went to him and said how can you sleep get up call on your god maybe he will notice us so that we will not perish then you hear about Jonah Jonah was sent to Nineveh and the bible say that the bible say that Jonah arrived in Nineveh when Jonah arrived in Nineveh after when he tried to run away like what you are hearing 
and after being taken to Nineveh by the by the fish the Bible says now the Lord provided a huge fish verse number 17 to swallow Jonah and Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights then Jonah arrived in Nineveh to preach the gospel what God have sent him to say which the Bible say that he is going to Nineveh to preach against it to talk against to prophesy against it then someone who is not wise when we hear Jonah preaching against Nineveh will say ah ah Jonah is talking about bad things that are about to happen in the land and they became angry. Sometimes they will be angry with Jonah and they say that ah, I don't just want to hear what he's saying. This man must go away. But Jonah is prophesying. Jonah is preaching and the purpose of the preachings of Jonah he is preaching so that Nineveh can repent. He is preaching to warn that if Nineveh, you, if you don't repent, people of Nineveh, if you don't repent, you will perish. If you don't amend your ways, things are going to be very bad. If you don't amend your ways, you are going to perish. Then that's what you must understand that this kind of prophetic word is given. That is the reason why it's been given. When Jonah has preached, that's what the Bible is talking about in the book of Jonah chapter 3. The Bible said that the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh, proclaim to the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very huge city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began by going a day journey into the, the city proclaiming 40 more days Nineveh will be overthrown he's telling them he's warning them Nineveh is going to be overthrown Nineveh believed God and a fast was proclaimed all of them from the greatest to the least put on the sackcloth and the Bible says that this is the, the proclamation he issued Nineveh by a decree of a king and his nobles, do not let people or animals, head or flag, test anything or drink, let, or let them eat or drink. But let people and animals be covered with sackcloth. Everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Who knows? God will relent and have compassion on his feet anger. When God saw that they did this, how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring them destruction he had threatened. Then you see, it all starts with the prophecy of Jonah. It all starts with the, the word of God that is given. And sometimes that is a warning. It's a warning. When that warning has been given, then those who hear it must repent. It was the same thing with... Amen with Judah Judah God is telling them that their city will be carried away completely then it needs a discerning heart to know what to do 
you might think everyone who have heard the word of the man of God when the man of God have spoken have done have repented not everyone have repented not everybody have repented and sometimes you wonder did they all know what to do what they were supposed to do we wonder the Bible talks about Eli the Bible says that Eli God came and talked to the young man by the name of Samuel and God talked to Samuel and told him the things that were were about to happen to the house of Eli the things that were going to going to happen to Eli and his sons Hophni and Phineas and you think Eli is going to fast and repent you think Eli is going to repent but Eli does not repent Eli says that what God has planned to do he must do even though what God is saying by the by the young man what God is saying is a warning many of us understand if God says something bad is going to happen yet it was if the if the evil continue if the person did not repent indeed is going to happen but when you hear it you must hear it as a warning you must hear it as a warning that you do something about it you must go and you repent and most of the time if you repent god will change his mind but Amen. you must not just hear the prophetic word that God said that this is going to happen in your life and you relax. It is dangerous. That's why we hear about Hophni and Phineas what God have talked against them. It came to pass. What God have talked against them it came to pass. They died. And the early died also. then even what the men of god like jonah have said it was going to happen but because they heard the word of god and repented it did not happen one of the thing if god speaks against you if god speaks a rebuking word one of the thing that you must do is to repent and turn away from our wicked ways. Amen. And the Bible say that in the book of Jeremiah chapter 13 verse number 22. If you ask yourself why has this happened to me? It is because of many of your many sins that your skirts have been turned torn off and your body mistreated. The word of God say that when you're going to be wondering when those people are going to be wondering why these things are happening to them why this thing is happening to them the word of God say that it will be because of their many of their sins I remember the Bible talks about Jesus Christ sometimes when he have healed somebody when he have delivered somebody sometimes he used to say that go and sin no more go and sin no more otherwise something worse than this will happen to you because sometimes some people are going through certain attack certain problem because of sins then in order in order to be delivered from that attack they must stop those sins they must stop those sins and that's why here also the word of god is saying that the calamity that it was going to come 
the calamity that was going to happen, it was because of their sins. The calamity, it was because of their sins. That's what the Bible said. Why, they are wondering, why are they going to be on this attack? Why something so bad when God have chosen them and God loved them so much? It's going to happen. And the Bible says that it's going to happen because of their sins. And because of their sins, the Bible says that they are going to be embarrassed. They are going to be under attack. They're going to be under attack. They're going to be mistreated. Then the Bible says that in the book of Jeremiah chapter 13 verse number 23, can an Ethiopian change his skin or a leopard his spot? Neither can you, you do good who are custom of doing evil. Yes, in the Old Testament it was like that. In the olden days it was like that. If you talk about can people change their skin, today it's happening, people are bleaching and you, somebody was dark, so no later they have a, of lighter skin. In the olden days, <laughs> there was a time that they did not have certain chemicals to bleach their skins. But in our days, they can lighten their skin, they can change. Then what, what, what are we trying to say? In the olden days, yes, if somebody was a sinner and custom of their way of sinners, maybe it was, for her, it was so hard for them to change. But in our days, all things are possible with God. In our days, Amen. Jesus Christ has come. Jesus Christ have come, Jesus Christ have died, Jesus Christ have come back to life. And Jesus Christ is at the right hand of God. Then what it means is that a person can repent. Anyone can repent. Anyone can open their heart to Jesus. And Jesus Christ can turn, turn their hearts can tame their hearts and they can change and they can be born again and become the child of God. Like what you have done to Saul of Tarsus. Like what he has done to Saul of Tarsus. When you hear that Saul of Tarsus, when you hear that Saul of Tarsus, he used to be a sinner, he used to be a killer, he used to be a persecutor. But one day he had an encounter with Jesus. That Apostle Paul changed from being sold to be Apostle Paul to be Apostle Paul. And others could not believe. Say, what are you talking about? That man is soul of Tarsus. So what is the soul of Jesus? And the Bible said that there were some people who were even afraid of him, those who were born again. Because they knew him as a persecutor. Somebody could say that, no, I know Saul. He was the one who was leading. Do you know that he was the one who was leading the, the stoning of Stephen? He was there. He was the ringleader. He got even the letter. They said, no, he even changed his name. Or they wanted. Didn't he just change his name so that he can get the Christian nicely now? Are you seeing that he's the man of God? Are you seeing that he's the apostle is coming to preach? They say, yes. No, is that not the strategy to get us on the one place? And no, we have changed. There is power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Soul of Tarsus has changed. Soul of Tarsus is born again. And Soul of Tarsus is the child of God. You know, in the word of Amen. God, in the Old Testament, there are not a lot of people who have changed. You can't, you can't read the word of God in the Old Testament and hear that so and so was a bad person. 
if the word of God tells you that there was a certain person who was very bad in the word of God, that person most of the time he will die bad. Only few people change in the Old Testament. Most of the people who were who were bad, they end bad. But uh, not until the time of Jesus Christ. How many people were so bad, you know, that this one was a drunkard? This one was a drunkard. This one was a bad person. But today they are born again. Today they are saved. Today they are the children of God. And their life have changed completely. And if you want to trace what they have changed, it is not as if they just they went to prison and they changed. The only thing that you can trace, that person is born again. That's why today is a preacher. And they will tell that that person was used to be bad. Like what the Bible is talking about. That in the Old Testament, when a person, neither can he, that person could not do good. He was accustomed to evil. But Jesus Christ came and washed away their sins. And they were born again and they were saved the same person is no longer a sinner as the same person is no longer a liar the same person is no longer a thief but they are born again they have repented they are cleansed by the blood of jesus christ and now their life has changed because jesus christ has got power to change our lives jesus christ has got power to change your life and you have got the power to change the Amen. life of everybody. There is nothing like Amen. such in the New Testament. After the coming of Jesus, that there is a permanent sinner. There is nothing like such. But there is Jesus who is able to change see sinners to become righteous people. And become the children of God. People who are filled with the Holy Ghost. Who have become the child of God. And even become the servants of God. Only because of the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. And the power of the Holy Ghost. And the power of the Holy Ghost. Even today. What it was a detestable scene in the Old Testament. When people will be worshipping idols, how many people? Whom today, every day, they are throwing away idols. They are renouncing idols. And they accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior. How many people? Many of them, as they hear the gospel, and they see the power of God in their life, they are rejecting the the idols they are rejecting and they are accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior and they see the power of God in their lives but I'm trying to say to you in the New Testament yes I don't know whether that is called spiritual bleaching but an Ethiopian is changing their skin those who were sinners those who are sinners are changing their life. They are accepting Jesus and their life changed completely. That's why when you see anybody, when you see anyone, if you can see anyone today living in sin, the only hope that you must have for them is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Have a hope that in the gospel of Jesus Christ, if they can hear Jesus, if they can accept Jesus, their life will change. Their life will change. They will be born again. When you see somebody who seems to be so bad, the only thing that you must say to yourself, if, if only this one can hear the gospel of Jesus Christ and believe with their heart and confess with their mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord, and God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If they can only hear the gospel and open their hearts, that power of the blood of Jesus Christ have got power to wash away every kind of sin. 
every kind of sin. You have got the power to save everyone. You have got the power to, to save everyone. And that's why in the New Testament, in our dispensation, oh, it's a wonderful time that anyone, that the only thing that they're supposed to do is to open their hearts and welcome Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior. And their life will change, their evil habit will change. He has got the power to do so. To save the lives of men. Anyway, because of time, I want us to prepare to go and pray. Go and talk to the Lord. Go and pray tonight. Avria son chali krandos kradia zokrada sabraha. Jesus Christ, 
Jesus Christ. The love of God. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us all. Surely goodness and love shall follow me all the days of my life. And I dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. This is just a reminder. Tomorrow we are praying. We are fasting, having our Friday prayer and fasting. And tomorrow we are having an intense prayer. Let us get ready for intense prayer. Um, as tomorrow is Friday, we're going to have time to pray the biggest prayer of Friday. And as we do so, we'll see the power of God. And I want to say to us tonight, may God bless you. Have a blessed and a wonderful night in Jesus' name. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a blessed morning, day and afternoon and night. Amen. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.